Beneath the waves lurks a stealthy war machine. Submarines, the silent killer. Capable of carrying out a nuclear attack, today's submarines play a key role in the national defense of many countries. Rarely sighted, they patrol the world's oceans while their crews watch and wait, ready to take their enemy by surprise. Underwater craft have a long and colorful history. In 332 BC, Alexander the Great is said to have commissioned a very fine barrel made of white glass, so he could view the depths of the sea during the Siege of Tyre. In 1620, Dutch scientist Cornelius Drebbel built an enclosed rowboat with waterproof leather oars. The craft traveled from Westminster to Greenwich along the River Thames. Its hydrodynamic form enabling it to travel underwater when it was propelled ahead by the oarsmen. The next 150 years saw several innovative designs, including the Rotterdam, a wooden submersible with a clockwork engine, and Giovanni Borelli's diving bell, in which the passenger would inhale oxygen via a breathing tube. With so many of the world's battles being fought on water, it was obvious to military strategists that an underwater craft would be a huge tactical advantage. In 1776, American inventor David Bushnell designed and constructed the first military submarine. Known as the Turtle, the tiny craft was intended to break the British naval blockade of New York Harbor during the War of Independence by setting explosives on the ship's hulls. The plan failed, but the idea of using a submersible craft to carry weaponry gained momentum. In the 1790s, at the request of French Emperor Napoleon, American engineer Robert Fulton built the Nautilus, a metal submarine powered by a surface sail. When the craft was submerged, a leather snorkel tube delivered air to the occupants. Fulton also had success with carcasses, his term for floating explosives that could be towed by the submarine and used against ships. The American Civil War saw the first practical examples of submarine warfare. The American Navy commissioned the Alligator in 1861 with plans to use the iron submersible to destroy bridges and boats with limpet mines. But the craft sank in bad weather less than a year after its launch. It was left to the Confederate submarine H.L. Hunley to make history by becoming the first submersible to successfully destroy a target. On February 17, 1864, the Hunley blew up the House of Tonic, a sloop of war moored at the entrance of South Carolina Harbor with a torpedo, fatally damaging itself in the process. As the century wore on, inventors experimented with various power sources. John Holland's designs used an internal combustion engine for surface power and electric battery power under water. In 1900, a Holland submarine became the first submersible purchased by the United States Navy. It carried three torpedoes ready to be fired from an 18-inch torpedo tube and a mortar for surface use. Holland also sold models to Britain, Russia, and Japan. In 1905, Theodore Roosevelt visited the USS Plunger and became the first American president to dive in a submarine. Roosevelt told a reporter, I went down in it chiefly because I did not like to have the officers and enlisted men think I wanted them to try things I was reluctant to try myself. I believe a good deal can be done with these submarines, although there is always the danger of people getting carried away with the idea and thinking that they can be of more use than they possibly could be. The Plunger was a 107-ton Holland-type submarine 
that served on experimental torpedo duties at Rhode Island and as a training craft for sailors learning the new skill of submarine warfare. The USS C-1 Octopus was another sub operating as a training vessel from Newport. The Octopus later patrolled Atlantic waters during the First World War. Another important submarine pioneer was American inventor Simon Lake. Inspired by Jules Verne's science fiction tales of submersible voyages, Lake patented more than 200 advances in naval design, including the Protector, the first submarine to have diving planes mounted forward of the conning tower and a flat keel. His company secured a number of contracts from the US Navy, such as the SEAL G-1, that featured, in addition to the fixed torpedo tubes on the bow, four torpedo tubes on her deck that could be positioned and fired even when the submarine was submerged. The SEAL could dive to a record 256 feet and had a top speed of 14 knots when surfaced and 10 knots underwater. Four 300 horsepower gasoline engines and 375 horsepower electric motors powered her twin screws. In Germany, the Friedrich Krupp Germania Werft shipbuilding company became a major manufacturer of submarines. The first Krupp submarines were based on French design. But in 1906, U-1, first submarine built for the German Imperial Navy, floated out of the shipyard. German U-boats later became key strategic players in First World War hostilities, prowling the Atlantic in search of merchant and passenger ships. Their most notorious victim was the Lusitania, which was torpedoed by U-20 on the 7th of May, 1915. The luxury liner took just 18 minutes to sink under the Atlantic waves, taking more than a thousand people with her. Once underwater, submarines were invisible, able to attack without warning. U-boats were also used to lay mines and lure warships towards them. The German campaign successfully reduced the number of ships able to bring supplies from America, and Britain was forced to introduce rationing. To thwart submarine attacks, naval boats would pump smoke through their funnels to create a smoke screen that shielded the vessel. Submarines themselves were vulnerable to attack from aeroplanes, so they sometimes hoisted sails to look like a sailing boat from the air. However, many submarines were successfully destroyed, including the U-boat that sank the Lusitania. In 1917, HMS Prize, under the command of New Zealander William Saunders, successfully repelled an attack from German submarine U-93, which sank after being hit by a shell at close range. The sub's commander was rescued and the U-boat thought to have been lost. However, the second-in-command was able to regain control over the stricken sub and bring it safely back to Germany. French submarine building picked up speed after the 